American city, we will hear from a school safety and security expert who now has responded to seven school shootings. Focused on flooding, the citywide meeting happening tonight in Fenton and why officials are asking you to come out and speak up. Well, this morning, authorities are looking for the driver who left a man seriously injured and hit and run. More on the vehicle police are looking for this morning. Car thieves caught on camera. The warning from Jefferson County Police after weekend crime spree. This is Today in St. Louis, focused on you. Well, good morning, everyone. We are taking a live look this morning from Kirkwood. And, you know, we, we've been kind of on this flower watch mm -hmm. in the last few mm -hmm. days. No mm -hmm. flowers, but uh, it's coming. Oh, yeah. Promise. Oh, you. yeah. It's coming. You know what's interesting is mm. a lot of folks have already had their first cut of the year when it comes to their lawns. Ooh. There's a lot of lines now in the neighborhood. Oh, My yeah. grass is getting long. I was just yeah. thinking mm. of yesterday. I, you know what? The, the, Homeowners Association sent me a note saying, can oh. you talk mm -hmm. to Anthony about that, please? No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Good Tuesday morning, everybody. It is March the 28th. I'm ready not. And I'm Michelle Lee. We want to say thank you for joining us, including those of you who might be joining us on 5 Plus as well. Of course, Paul Cook's been keeping an eye on the roads, and Anthony's been keeping an right. eye on the Skies. weather. And the flowers. Eye to the sky. And the grass. <laughs> yeah, all of those yeah. things. Uh, we have uh, rain that is approaching St. Louis right now. Mm -hmm. Nothing heavy this morning, but the light showers can even sometimes cause an issue. So just be mindful of that. As you hit the roads, you may have some little sprinkles and light showers come on down. Right now, it's out across parts of 44. Approaching in Gray Summit, Sullivan, Rolla, that's where the showers are for now. This is working its way towards St. Louis. And so between now and lunchtime, we'll have a few showers around. You look at the national radar and it really looks like it's coming down, but it's not. If you've been watching for a while, we've been talking about the dew point, moisture and atmosphere, weather jargon, things like that. So it's just a little too dry right now at the surface. But over the course of the next few hours, things will change. Our atmosphere will moisten up a bit. 40 degrees at Lambert, 30s elsewhere out the door. So just a touch cooler this morning. The showers clear away this afternoon. We're dry by lunchtime, low 50s for highs today. All right, let's head over to Paul Cook. He is tracking the Tuesday morning commute. Taco Tuesday morning commute. Maybe we can coin that as a new, a new term here. I like it. Maybe I can also get a little icon that travels around. A little, oh, little taco. We can do that. Taquita. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're moving very, very well out there. Uh, traffic is just no issues. There are those moments of construction that you see uh, that will bog you down. But with this light volume moving very well, more traffic coming very soon. Thanks so much. All right, well, heartbreak in Nashville this morning after another school shooting left three nine-year-old students and three staff members dead. This morning, we are getting new video from inside the elementary school leading up to the tragedy, and we do want to give you a word of warning. The following video may be hard for some of you to watch, but uh, let's take a look here. You can see surveillance video showing the suspect, a former student, shooting at the doors of the school to get inside. The 28-year-old shooter, Audrey Hale, was later shot and killed by officers as they rushed into that building. Investigators say this school was not the only target. Multiple victims down. There was going to be uh, shootings at multiple locations, uh, and, um, and the school was one of them. There was actually a map uh, of the school detailing surveillance uh, entry points. Well, the school is part of the Covenant Presbyterian Church with about 200 students. Back here in St. Louis, of course, we've experienced a similar sinking feeling when a shooter entered Central VPA High School, taking the lives of a student and a teacher. Our Alex Fees is joining us now from Central VPA with how our community is reacting this morning. Michelle, good morning. Yesterday, Five on Your Side spoke to a school safety and security expert, a psychologist, and a parent here at Central VPA in this, the aftermath of the latest school shooting in America. Now, Monday's deadly school shooting at a private Christian school in Nashville was an emotional and chilling reminder for Vondina Washington of St. Louis. Five months ago, Washington's 15-year-old son, Brian Collins, was shot in both wrists and, his, and the neck when a gunman opened fire inside a classroom at Central Visual and Performing Arts High School. Brian's teacher, Jean Kushka, and classmate Alexandre Bell were both killed. 
Washington cannot stop thinking about the three children and three adults. Police say were shot and killed by one woman yesterday in Nashville. Meanwhile, John McDonald is the nationally recognized chief operating officer of the Council for School Safety Leadership in Columbia, Missouri. He has responded now to seven school shootings nationwide, including Sandy Hook and Central VPA. Now he's reaching out to this Tennessee school district. What we're seeing now is a callousness and an anger and a desire um, to uh, for retribution um, and and these people are not afraid to broadcast their intent just last week several st louis county fire departments adopted a new fire code to protect kids in the classroom it mandates color-coded labeling inside and outside school building doors and windows these colors and numbers correspond to signs in the hallway the numbers all need to be a certain height so first responders can see them from a distance. Now coming up in our next half hour, we will hear from a psychologist on this issue, a psychologist from Webster University, also a parent here at Central VPA. Live this morning in South City, Alex Fees, five on your side. Thank you, Alex. Right now, schools all around our area are on high alert. This comes as high school students in Wright City were sent home early yesterday because of a threat, but it was later turned out to be just a hoax. A Missouri Highway Patrol says that there are several prank calls that were like that throughout the state yesterday. Students at Wright City High School will return to class this morning. We will continue to follow the latest developments happening in Nashville. You can get all the details on the Five on Your Side app. New overnight, the Missouri State Highway Patrol and Ferguson Police are searching for the driver involved in a hit and run that seriously hurt a man. It happened last night on Chambers Road and Joyce Ellen. The man was rushed to the hospital with life-threatening injuries, but anyone with information is asked to call the Ferguson Police. Right now, northbound Interstate 270 at Manchester is back open after a crash. It stopped traffic for several hours overnight. The crash happened between Manchester Road and Clayton Road around 11 o'clock last night. As you can see here, an SUV was heavily damaged after it crashed into the back of a semi-truck. No word at this time on if anyone was hurt or what caused that crash. Right now, it's a hot spot for flooding, but this morning, the city of Fenton is trying to come up with a better plan to handle the threat in the Merrimack Basin. Our city stalwart is live at Fenton City Hall, where a citywide meeting is happening to, tonight. And Sydney, you say city planners are looking to residents for solutions, right? That's right, Michelle and Rennie. If you live in the city of Fenton, if you have experience with flooding, or if you have suggestions on ways the city can reduce flood risk for business owners and homeowners here in the area, they want to hear from you here at City Hall at tonight's meeting. They're going to be working with the Army Corps of Engineers from the St. Louis District tonight to try and find solutions. Now, we do know that this area is prone to flooding. It wasn't long ago, just about seven months ago, when our crew was out in this area out in Jefferson County covering some widespread flooding and we were inside this RV park in Fenton. An elderly couple had to be water rescued this day back in August. Now the city wants to find ways to prevent flooding and problem areas like this one. So the meeting is going to be tonight from 530 to 7 here at Fenton City Hall in the council chambers a new Smizer Mill Road just off 141. During tonight's meeting, the Army Corps of Engineers will give a presentation. They'll be talking about the existing flooding conditions Conditions, the engineer's suggestions on ways to reduce the flood risk and then give a recap of some of the recent flooding problems we've seen near the Merrimack River. And then, of course, you will be able to comment. Now, the city of Fenton will also have some staff members here to answer any questions you have. And if you're not going to be able to make the meeting tonight, but you still want to know what's said in the Army Corps of Engineers presentation, don't worry, because we're told they're going to be posting that presentation on their website after the meeting is over. Reporting in Fenton. I'm Sydney Stallworth, five on your side. Thanks so much, Sydney. In just a few hours, the city of East St. Louis will break ground on its biggest project in nearly three decades. The $44 million redevelopment project is for the new Broadview Hotel. This is the largest project in downtown East St. Louis since the Casino Queen back in 1993. The groundbreaking will take place at noon today at 411 East Broadway in East St. Louis.
All right, let's get you up to speed with our weather first forecast. And this morning, there are some showers just west of St. Louis. These will be rolling through between now and I'd say 9, 10 o'clock. Notice how light and spotty they are, though. So not everybody will see the rain, but if you do, that could cause uh, the roads to be damp. And of course, it could impact you if you have to work outside or if you're waiting for the bus for a little bit of time. The rest of the day is dry. Tomorrow, we brighten up the skies. We'll have a mix of sun and clouds for Wednesday and Thursday. And of course, our attention is on Thursday for the Cardinals. Opening day 69 for the high temperature on Thursday and then on Friday there is the potential of thunderstorms as temperatures climb into the 70s. We'll take a look at the severe weather setup and the hazards we'll have to look out for the future cast and 7 a in just a few minutes.